from Shanghai to the world, dear Sophie, thank you so much for your time and especially for allowing me to come in in your beautiful, huge office. And it's the first time I see the new brand name. Exactly. Now, starting with this, um, how about you just tell us a little bit about you? Okay, uh, so thanks for having me with you. <laughs> Actually, we were supposed to have this conversation before the lockdown, but in your home, so, yeah, with a glass of wine. But unfortunately, it was a little bit delayed, two months, uh, two months and a half later. But let's go to where we're here together now. Um, so uh, just to introduce a bit myself, so my name is Sophie, uh, I've been in Shanghai since 2016, uh, I first studied in France, so as you can hear from my accent, I'm French, um, <laughs> proud, <laughs> proud of it, uh, and after my study actually I directly went to China uh, to study as well uh, for a semester, I loved it here, and I started my business with um, also like a business partner I met a few years ago when I was at university. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, his name is Vincent, and uh, we actually we worked in the student organization, national student organization together. And he talked me he talked to me about China. Uh, he went to Wuhan in 2010. So now everybody knows about Wuhan. <laughs> before no, no one knew about this city so he went there to study law and uh he loved it there uh, it was a super nice experience and he's so in china like a very nice country with lots of opportunities he talked to me about uh, here and actually i was i was interested i, I didn't i never thought about china I, like for me it was super far like i was dreaming about japan South korea but not mm -hmm. really about china so wow. i I became interested in the country and I was like, oh, okay, why not? He seems to, actually, I was like, he seems to have talents. He seems like uh, someone who like, will succeed in life. Um, it's like, I, I, I trust him to, um, to, like, to create something big. And I think I could be part of this something big. So uh, I have a leap of faith and uh, I just, when for it in China, I was like, okay, I give myself two months to see how it's going there. And actually it went pretty well since I'm still here <laughs> about seven years later. Wow. Um, so first we started like by uh, creating a community. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it was a website to be honest, uh, to promote French culture to Chinese people. A website in China or website in China? What was the worst idea ever? Uh, and uh, so it took us a few months to discover it was really a stupid idea. Mm -hmm. And in June, January 2015, we launched a WeChat account. And WeChat is number one in China, so it yes. makes sense. And we started publishing content almost every day. Uh, we worked with many people uh, to create content. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we gathered a committee of 35,000 people, so it was really wow. good. We started to become a little key opinion leader, like two Ooh. influencer. Uh, but we also discovered that this business model is pretty hard, um, especially when you want to grow. So, um, I mean, this helped us to get in touch with many brands. So we started mm -hmm. to, to talk with different brands. They started to ask us to create content for them. That's how we like, kind of became expert um, in creating content and managing social media. Mm -hmm. um, we also tried uh, some things on uh, like social e-commerce and WeChat. So we got new skills on this. And it helped us also to become legitimate when it comes to uh, like create the digital strategy. Mm -hmm. So that's how we switched from being influencer to a digital marketing agency. So since, uh, so since 2017, we are a digital marketing agency. In 2018, we merged with a tech agency. Mm -hmm. And so now we're a slingshot uh, with 35 people, three departments, one tech, one for trade, one for communication, and um, like lots of nice projects with brands such as Louis Vuitton, Rothschild, the French dairy products, organizations, uh, different kinds of clients. And on my side, I'm mostly in charge of communication and trade marketing. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm so proud of you guys. And I was lucky to be with you when you actually announced a new uh, company name before a uh, lockdown, when we still were able to go to bars and celebrate and, uh, and so on. It's interesting we spoke about Vincent quickly because um, the way how you introduced him and that he had a really important uh, thing for you. Also for me, he gave um, a few good introductions and always good tips when, when I started my business in Shanghai and uh, I was also hoping to interview him but he just left to he just left China I yeah. found out he did not have a chance to say goodbye to a very good friend so talking about this and um, thanks to him I got to know you we were in lockdown we just opened up two weeks ago uh, life is not fully back to normal but what was lockdown like for you And I would love to see a perspective from the company side as well as maybe private life, if you let us in. Actually, it was challenging on both sides. Uh, if I start with the private part, and oh. um, I met uh, like someone in September 2021, mm -hmm. and we decided to move out uh, together in February uh, 2021. Two, so just a few months ago and in March we were in lockdown so after <laughs> one month and a half together <laughs> in the same apartment we had to be uh, together all the time in the apartment and it was like first it was more like a test either it works either like really the relationship won't make it I mean it was supposed to be five days it right? was supposed to be even four days and it oh, took well. two months so very long and actually we discovered like it was um like we we were able to deepen our relationship like become stronger we got to learn each other and actually you cannot hide your personality during two months i mean well, you know when you start to seduce each other you try to show the best side but then during two months i mean you see who is a real person and i loved the person i saw so it was a good test a good challenge um i was happy to have it so it made us stronger. Uh, I mean, if uh, you want to test your relationship, stay two months together and you will see. <laughs> I love it. I mean, most people here in China are getting divorced now. Okay, not most, most people, but a lot of people, right? So I'm glad to see that's okay. I wouldn't say it was always easy. Of course, there are some moments that are hard, but it was completely manageable. And as long as you have someone open to discuss with, then it, it can work. So uh, I was pretty happy on this side and mm -hmm. on the work side, I mean, it was also very challenging on many aspects. Um, I mean, first, like at the beginning of the lockdown, a lot of people were extremely worried about the food part. So they were mm -hmm. looking for food, our employees, they were like obsessed also with food. So it's very hard to work during, of course, during the day when you think, okay, uh, I have almost no food left, where can I go find the food? And it was pretty challenging at the time to, especially in some districts, to like get some necessities, like very basic things. Um, so uh, of course we had to adapt and also to make them feel, okay, we're here for you. Um, even like we had some people being alone all day and it's pretty hard psychologically to, when you were by yourself during yeah. two months, yeah no one face to face to talk with yeah so we also had to, to play this role of telling them like okay it's gonna be better uh we're here to talk anytime just text me and be also being more than just like a boss to them but also being kind of friend so asking them about their situation every week being there uh, in case they in case they need anything mm -hmm. but to be honest i think this lockdown was also i mean for me it was an opportunity to learn to i mean there are of course there are things you can do but you have some space to create like your own projects to think about your life to think about what you want to do and on my side it's been years i wanted to take the hsq free test i studied uh i studied and i managed to like pass it in uh, less than two months so i was very happy about it congratulations thank you so much that's so little but at the same time i pushed it for years and now i'm working on it just before so i feel good because i finally it allowed me to reach a goal mm -hmm. and uh and in some other ways as well like for example i wanted to improve my cooking skills mm -hmm. that was the perfect opportunity because 
the government sends you package and actually one time, for example, we receive the package with 10 different types of uh, mushrooms and that's all. <laughs> so you have to be, okay, what am I going to do with all these mushrooms and yeah. find ways to use it? You so, get very creative. Huh? Exactly. Wow, congratulations. Now, talking about your company, so I know you are three owners, basically, mm -hmm. and one of them also has just left the country. Yeah. Do you think this is, I mean, I don't know if he will come back, um, our good friend Vincent or not. I hope definitely to see him again. Um, but like, is this going to affect the company? I mean, China, the current market is also changing. Some companies are leaving the country. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like how much is your business affected? And, Will it have an effect if one of the founders um, has left the country for now? I mean, um, it depends what's your rotation in your company. So, for example, on my side, I'm working in like managing the communication uh, department of the agency. So, um, I need to be there to like like work with the employees, check on the work, and so on. But also, so my business partner, he his mission is to do business development. Mm -hmm. So during lockdown, and he's so good at that. He's so, so good. good. <laughs> exactly, and I will be happy to see that. <laughs> We're praising him so much. <laughs> yes, but it's just how do you do business development, which is your main mission, when you're in lockdown? So I mean, we didn't think about it so much. It was more like, okay, the situation is not going well, and in China, the um, the economy was will slow down for sure. Yes. Where do we, where can we find opportunities? Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, that's obvious. Um, we have already so many clients in France. We have, we, we can see so many opportunities that of course we need to have one of us going there to uh, like meet the clients, discuss, find more opportunities. So it can also bring business to China. So I, I believe he will come back. It's not like he left for good. It's more like it's, an opportunity to go do business in France. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always loved about him because when I was able to speak to him, he always had a perfect overview about the global market, the Chinese market, from politics to like laws to like, I mean, every part. He is yeah. so, he knows everything. And then he's so looking forward into strategy. And I always feel like he is a very good mentor has good advice and especially sees these opportunities. Exactly, that's his strength. Like when something is not going well, he every time he tells me, okay, there's an opportunity in there. Because of the market, it's hard to access to this market. Then it means that we will become more rare. Like there will be less people being able to come in, create their agency. Um, so of course we have a local uh, market, uh, local agencies competitor, but it's not really competitors actually when we pitch uh brands were almost never against the whole uh, agencies mm. um and i think i, I believe foreign brands they also like um, like the big cultural aspect we have is like we have a chinese team who operates uh like who knows the social media uh, that will be able to uh, create great strategy for the Chinese market, but at the same time, they can talk to uh, like French people, uh, Spanish people, like mm -hmm. European people, or whatever. And, and they feel uh, culturally they're more like they're closer, mm -hmm. so they feel like they can it, it increase the trust in some ways. Mm -hmm. Now, looking back at the lockdown, or let's say uh, when COVID started two years ago. Um, can you share any learnings or like how was it back then for you? I don't know if there's any similarities compared to now or I think it's hard to really compare. I mean, we want to make comparison, but the thing is, it's the first time we we're really in lockdown. That's I mean, true. two years ago, I mean, Wuhan was in lockdown, but in Shanghai, I mean, I, I came back from Thailand and they told me, okay, you just need to stay two weeks at home, but I could still go out. I could go to buy groceries and so on. I was so lucky. I, I didn't even feel in lockdown. I was like, okay, I, I just need to wait a little bit at home and then I will be able to come back to the office. Um, but even at home, I, I, I could go out. So it was fine. And um, so it felt very different. And second, so after the like few months um, in uh, like with the COVID situation, suddenly the brands, they were 100% ready to invest. Like, 
they felt like they lost the first part of a year, so they had to catch up on the second part of the year to invest as much as possible. Amazing. So, yeah, to, to like catch up the time. Uh, so it, it was pretty good. But uh, what is a big difference here is like uncertainty. It's mm. that we don't know oh, we may go back to lockdown, uh, but at the same time, it's hard to go back to lockdown again, but it could happen in other um, cities uh, in mm. China. So I mean, people are a bit worried also about investing right away mm. because we don't know what will happen in the coming weeks. So it's also like our mission to tell them, okay, that's, I mean, uh, investing in China is a long-term project. It's not like, of course, short-term, uh, in the coming month, I will increase my stuff like crazy. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's a market full opportunities still. Um, but if you want to go to a market, you need to invest and see longer. Mm. I know you have been growing, or the company have, has been growing like very fast in the last few months. You onboarded so many new employees. Um, I, I was so excited when I heard about it. Um, and it seems like you you kept everybody. Um, um, mm-hmm. Although you, you had a tough lockdown, which is probably a lot of costs, mm-hmm. I don't know if you were able to work in a normal way and deliver, but uh, congratulations. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy that at least um, in your company, people did not lose um, their jobs because, yeah, it's been a tough time for many. It, indeed, it was hard. I mean, uh, of course, we lost some projects. We had, for example, some offline projects. Um, and we had no incoming pitch uh, in the company. So mm-hmm. I cannot say 100% of the people are like completely occupied, but uh, at the same time, we try to be very careful. And, um, and I mean, we have like um, stable incomes from some projects. We have a lot of retainers. So um, I mean, we believe this is short term. It will improve. And of course it will also maybe change some of the habits we have, like for example, when doing offline events, of course, we have less and less offline, but digitizing even more. And as we also have a tech department, uh, it's a big opportunity for us digitizing events, creating different ways to meet people. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So, as I have founded my company by myself, I was always thinking when I looked at you three, wow, you seem to be such a good team. You are so well structured. Seems like you're awesome. How, like, you come up with these synergies and mm-hmm. who has which strengths that you bring in together. I've been wondering from your perspective, do you think it is smarter to open your company by yourself or with the second person or like you guys are three? I know a few people um, today I was meeting an Italian guy. He has a few companies and very often they're even five. For example, two Italians, three Chinese. What's your opinion like on um, when you open a company? Alone with partners, how many? Um, I mean, so we're three French people. <laughs> we could have Chinese, but it's not we didn't want to have Chinese on the board. It's just we didn't find the right person, and it's not even about nationality. It's about finding the right person because you really need to trust each other. It's so important. So if you're with the wrong person, you can lose everything. It can go very wrong. So the most important for us was like to trust each other and to believe in each other. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, as you mentioned, like we really have different strengths. And uh, there are strengths that I, I really admire. Uh, for example, we mentioned last night, he's really good at networking. Um, so, you know, like when, uh, when, when I see at these skills, I, it's something I wish I can have, I don't have it, but I also have my own strength. And I can bring to the company that I can bring to the company as well. So I think we kind of completing each other, and it helped us to have this incredible growth. Mm-hmm. Because if we didn't have each other, I mean, it would have probably be different for sure. But maybe the growth would have been that uh, quick. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. So I had the pleasure to share the stage with you last year. Um, we both spoke at an event. And I've learned a lot from you. Um, These were probably basic tips that you gave about marketing and content creation. And I was really surprised because I've known you only in tiny pieces, right? So you're such a power woman. You've achieved so much. You have so many followers, even in the first company and and you have your next to two men. So 
is there like a, like I always like to cover a topic like something that nobody talks about yeah. because it's a taboo topic or because you don't have the courage so from your perspective what do you think should we actually talk about and it doesn't matter if it's like from your perspective as a woman as a business owner whatever it is um i think i would talk like about self-esteem and also the pressure we put to ourselves and especially as a woman i would say um self-esteem because from my own story it's like i mentioned it at least two twice in the at least twice since the beginning of this interview mm -hmm. but i said like uh, i really admired Vincent, his strength his networking skills and the thing is that we have this habit to really value um, over people's quality and qualities we don't have so mm -hmm. it's like for me I, i saw his networking skills as something amazing i was like Wow, he connects with people so well, and uh, he he just enters in the room and he gets to know everyone. And how does he do that? And for me, I'm such like I feel I was I'm such a shy person, and I know it's hard for me. Like if I'm in, I'm in a room with people I don't know, I, I don't even know where to start. I don't feel good. I feel so anxious, and um, I was like, that's thanks to him we managed to uh, make this company grow and. I valued this quality so much that I almost forgot the things that I brought to the company, and I it was barely. I, I was, I was thinking like, okay, uh, it's like the quality I have is so random. Like so many people have them, but actually, no. It's I mean, it's not true. It's like what happened is not only. Uh, of course, there's some luck, but there's also hard work and a bit of talent. I think so. We had our own strength, and. I'm also part of uh, like making this company and I shouldn't underestimate just because I'm not as good as someone on some aspect, I shouldn't underestimate myself. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm still working on because I think it's a long process and mm -hmm. I'm still learning from it. But um, like accepting that uh, we have different strengths, capitalize on your strength, it's, it's useless to try to be good at something like over people manage much better than you mm -hmm. so i know it's good at networking but i'm, I'm good at other, at other things why i i need to push myself to be as good as him to do network I, i don't need it what i need is to be a good leader for my team what i need is to be aware of, um, of a digital market and know what i'm talking about what i need is to help clients to make their brand grow in china mm -hmm. so i need to focus on what i can do well and stop pressuring myself to be perfect in every area because I just cannot be. And when you have a pressure to be good at this and this and this, and it's not only in work, it's like in my personal life, okay, I should, I should look good. So I need to uh, be careful about my diet. I need to do sport. If I do sport, it means I need sometimes to leave work early, The people will see uh, I'm not at the office, so they can judge me. I mean, You feel like you have to be the perfect person, showing you work very hard, showing that you take care of yourself, but it, it's not possible to, mm -hmm. to do all these things. So yeah, it's like focus on your strength, give it, uh, give it all. It's interesting that you say this, and thank you for, for sharing um, this. I listened to Jessica Alba. Do you know Jessica Alba, the actress? Of course. Yeah, okay. So I didn't know that she actually, I knew her as an actress, but I didn't know she had founded the Honest Company, okay. which is worth a lot and quite famous. So she shared her stage at an entrepreneur conference in Munich. And she said in the beginning, I mean, she is basically the mind behind it when she had founded it after her daughter was born. And she said she gave all the credits to her male partners. Yeah. And it took her actually years, although she was so successful as an actress, for example, but it took her years to like get that self-esteem and to not like give all the credit to others, but to basically like keep it and say, yes, I'm proud of it and actually it is my company, I've done a lot and it was really inspiring and actually reminded me exactly of what you have to share. It's hard to, because it may look like we're bragging about it. And I think we also teach women to keep it low. Mm -hmm. So to not brag too much about themselves, to stay humble, but actually it's not because you're proud of what you're doing, but you're bragging about it. It's like, 
you can just say, okay, I'm glad I've done that. I'm happy to do that. Of course, it's not perfect, but I have my part in it. And uh, I feel it's harder for women to be honest. Mm. So my coach, Jackie Fox, he always says, we have to work on all the weaknesses that we have. Yeah. Now you mentioned a lot on like working on your strengths, yeah. focusing on your strengths. So what would be the advice? The, the advice? Do you think we should your strength? I would say because I mean you cannot change the person when you are. Of course you can change maybe five, ten percent of. Um, you shouldn't tell yourself, okay, I, I don't want to improve my weakness at all. Mm. It's more like there are things that make the person you are, and it's very hard to change them because that's just the way you, you are as like a personality and I cannot I mean it will always be hard for me to go see people of course I have to do it in certain occasions so mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I will never uh, do it for long of course I, I do it when I have to do it I will do it but it's just I don't have to make it my main focus it's, be it's better I spend my time on things I'm good at I shouldn't force myself to be better at things over people like can really be better, um, be better at. It. Mm -hmm. Wow! Thanks for sharing. Now let me ask you something about: Do you have something like a philosophy in life or in work? I would say, generally speaking, it's like uh, embracing opportunities. N not a new opportunity. It's more like select your opportunities depending on the goals you have and commit. Like be committed to like give it all um, until you're really satisfied, and I think that's the philosophy I I have like for all aspects of my life. Like love life once I select like, the person I think is right, I will commit to this relationship. Work I've been committed for this like so many years for my mm -hmm. work, and I I give it all because I'm also passionate about it. I love it, but I also believe it's. Uh, it, like we're doing the right thing it's super interesting or, if, or like for example if you take my like sport it's just like i've been practicing pole dance for years once i, I looked at it i was like okay i need to do that and it's just like i typed it on the internet and then i okay i will do the sport and since then i'm still doing it i've seen radio she's really good <laughs> <laughs> awesome now do you have any I mean, it's very admirable that you're so committed because a lot of people, they start, it's too hard to give up and they don't have discipline and nothing. You're different. Now, do you have any dreams or life goals that you want to share with us? Like, let's talk about the future. It, it was so hard to answer this question, actually. I, I was thinking about it like the whole day. I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> that's really my dream. And now I was typing on the example of dream and I was like, what kind of dream I could mention because not even in my life I'm, I'm happy with what I have and I feel that I, I'm growing every day and in some way I was like what is important for me apart from having a family and having my own kids is like be recognized for my work um, I want to be recognized for my work it's like recognition is something very important for me and when I say recognized it's it can be it can go for different things it's like um be considered for example in my industry like as a as an expert in uh like the chinese digital ecosystem so it's like for example uh, getting the opportunity to have interviews like this or being invited to conference or teaching like for example i discovered teaching uh, a few years ago i really loved it to share my knowledge to 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 bring value to people and to be recognized for it, it's something that uh, that made me happy. Mm. Very inspiring, thank you. So now talking about more about the future, so what are the next steps? Now that you actually know what your dreams are, what your goals are, your philosophy, um, I think with goals, it, it, it really evolves, like it, it depends on the time. It's just, I started to do something, uh, I think it was in January. Mm -hmm. So I have always on my computer a table open and I have different categories, like three, four categories that I want to focus mm -hmm. during the year. Mm -hmm. um, first one is uh, like teaching, like uh, something answering the recognition part. So it's like what kind of conference I'm doing, uh, teaching opportunities I'm looking for. All uh, this part is like getting expert in my area. 
The other part is how can I, uh, like what is important for me is like to be independent financially so I can rely on only on myself and no one else. Mm -hmm. And for this, I'm also putting some uh, things that I do every month, like for example, getting interested in the stock market, mm -hmm. uh, getting interested in um, like I don't know, Bitcoin or whatever, like learning also, like making my financial culture kind of to um, try things, try to invest in different areas to, yeah, to be uh, independent uh, financially. Then I have this learning uh, area, like for example, with HSK, uh, like uh, getting better at Chinese, so my HSK3, HSK4, but also it, it's all related to culture in general, like for example, um, learning about wines, uh, working to get the, the WSCT, um, wow. to have some knowledge. Um, I don't know that. So that's the, that's the learning uh, area, and in this learning area, I realize what the cooking skills. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> but any, any things I'm learning, like see, I keep continuing learning. I think that's something that is also driving me, um, like makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Lifelong learning skills. <laughs> yes, and then something we have also in common, right? Awesome, beautiful. Thank you so much for your sharings. Um, are there any last words you want to share with our listeners from all around the world, not only China? Um, I think if there are some work colleagues uh, with us, like uh, watching us, I would like to like give a small advice. I'm not the one who will give a lot of advice because I feel it's also good to learn by yourself, but um, I think find something that helps you to disconnect because sometimes when we're work colleagues, it's like we work, we work, we work, we don't see anything else. But what really helped me with pole dance is that when days were hard, especially when you have to deal with human resources issues or something that can be big emotionally, then when I go to the pole, I forget about everything. And I feel like just after it, I feel like it's a new day and I refresh my mind and I'm ready to, um, to take any challenge. So I think we all need to find that something that helps us to also disconnect from work and also like being able to have a fresh mind on it. On it. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us to your beautiful office. I mean, it's late in the evening, so colleagues are already at home, yeah. which is good work-life balance, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's hard to get the <laughs> especially in an agency, right? Exactly. Yeah, so thanks for sharing, guys. If you love from Shanghai to the world, follow us, uh, send it to uh, your friends, your colleagues, maybe someone else gets inspired. I mean, I've been inspired from you. I took my notes here. Thanks for your sharings. And no matter where you are in the world, have a great day. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you, Sophie. <laughs>